Behind the scenes, work carries on, and we take a look at some of the transport systems. Port Sunlight Dock on the River Dibbin receives raw materials such as palm kernels, coconuts and groundnuts for the crushing mill. Materials from all parts of the world will have been transshipped from larger ocean-going vessels in the Mersey. Rail transport was used for the dispatch of most finished products, although some motor traffic and horse-drawn vehicles were used locally. Some parts of the country would be served by coastal shipping. A train of oil tanks heads for the top siding. A waste train travelling empty from the tip to the glycerine plant. At the top siding, mainline locos take over from Lever's own locomotives to deliver goods to all parts of the country via a very large nationwide rail network. Lunch break as workers relax outside the works. As we move to 1929, camel lairds are major shipbuilders having been established about a hundred years. Lairds amalgamated with Steelmaker's Camel in 1903. Birkenhead docks and locomotives are exported to all parts of the empire and the rest of the world. Three o'clock on the 19th of August, 1931, and cloud bursts are seen in Lower Tranmere on Union Street and Newchester Road. Half an inch of rain falls in 20 minutes. Newchester Road between St Paul's and Woodside is one foot deep in water in the space of an hour, but apparently Holchester Road nearby is two feet deep and Borough Road forms a raging torrent. Parts of Liverpool are flooded. Burtonhead's trams are in their last year of operation on the new ferry route, which will close at the end of December. The petrol station is still on the site in the background, and behind that is the sub-power station for the tramway. Sunshine again, and soon everything is back to normal in Parkinson's Dairy in Union Street.
Wednesday, the 18th of July, 1934, and in brilliant sunshine, the first Mersey Road Tunnel is officially opened. Uniting Lancashire and Cheshire, it's described as the greatest engineering achievement to date. Over a nine-year construction period, it cost eight million pounds and is 2.13 miles long, excluding the branch tunnels. At the Birkenhead entrance, built on the site of the Birkenhead Library, donated to the town by Andrew Carnegie, there are three miles of crowds with people finding vantage points by climbing onto rooftops and clinging to chimneys. At 11 o'clock, the band of the Grenadier Guards, dressed in scarlet and bearskins, play the British Grenadiers. The 4th, 5th Battalion of the Cheshire Regiment, based at Chester, lines the tunnel entrance. Supporting are the Birkenhead Institute Scout Troop. BBC relay speakers record progress in Liverpool. Lord Derby is in overall control. Captain A.C. Dawson, Birkenhead's Chief Constable, looks after arrangements in Birkenhead. King George V and Queen Mary complete their journey through the tunnel, accompanied by Transport Minister Leslie Hoare Belisha of Belisha Beacon fame and Lady-in-Waiting Dowager Countess of Airlie. Among those receiving the royal party are Mayor James Coulthard, Lord Leverhulme, local MP Graham White, town clerk E.W. Tame, and chief librarian John Shepherd. After speeches, the town clerk hurries across to introduce Birkenhead's oldest inhabitant, Samuel Gillingham, to the king. They chatted about the royal telegram sent to Mr. Gillingham on his 100th birthday. The party move off and drive around the town, up Grange Road via Charing Cross, to the new central library, replacing the one demolished for the new tunnel entrance. The royals are greeted by Alderman Sully, chairman of the Libraries, Museums and Arts Committee and father of the council. Pressing a jewelled lever later given to the king, the new library is declared open. Among the crowd are cadets from HMS Conway and Birkenhead School. The Chinese laundry opposite displays both the British and Chinese flags. The King and Queen move on to Rock Ferry Station to join the Royal Train. Notice the tram lines in Borough Road. Also in 1934, Founders' Day is celebrated at Bevington Oval. It's in honour of the first Lord Leverhulme, founder of Port Sunlight. It was an annual event that lasted until the early 1950s. Chester Motor Club display their skills. Now here's an unusual event, football on motorcycles, with England represented by Chester Motor Club. The match consists of three 20-minute sections with five-minute intervals between each. Changing ends is done midway through the second section.